Okay. So what's going on in this musical clip? What time signature is it in? Where's the pulse? So believe it or not, one way of thinking about what the musicians are doing here is by analyzing it, at least partially, within the time signature of 420. I recently was on tour with my band Sungazer alongside Shib Saran in his band who played this music, and I was able to see this bit of rhythmic wizardry night after night. It's a section that the band added to the live version of Shub's song, Slip. And there's a fair amount of stuff that's going on in order for us to understand why we need to have a 420 time signature, so let's get into it. The basic idea revolves around a riff that's built in 6-4. The bass line is built around five separate note attacks, the first four of which hit every fifth sixteenth note, and the final one lasting just four sixteenth notes. These add up to the 24 16th note subdivisions that you would normally expect in a measure of 6-4. By itself, it's a fairly slippery rhythm, appropriate for the name of the song. It's a rhythm that gave me trouble when I notoriously showed up to one of Shub's gigs last year stoned on a weed brownie. It wasn't really one of my finest hours. Play sober, kids. <laughs> Believe it or not, though, this is even before the 420 measure got involved. How did that come about? Like, how did you come up with that idea? Um, I think we we kept going back and forth between actually modulating in that solo section and then decided to try the melody over it. Like, try the melody in the metrically yeah, in modulated. The metric modulated yeah. thing. So, metric modulation is when the pulse of a new tempo is felt in relationship to a subdivision of an old tempo. It's basically a more elegant way of speeding music up or slowing it down because the new pulse can be felt or calculated in relationship to the old pulse. The most common kind of metric modulation occurs when the half note of one tempo becomes the quarter note of a new tempo, commonly known as halftime. <laughs> You're feeling the quarter note half as fast, and so things slow down. This is, of course, very common in breakdown sections. In the example that we're talking about, the first four note attacks, the ones which we're hitting every five sixteenth notes, are metrically modulated to become quarter notes in the new tempo. When we do this, the music feels like it's slowing down. Not a lot, but noticeably. This is the melody in the original tempo. <laughs> And this is the melody that has been metrically modulated, where the new quarter note has been set to every 5 16th notes of the old tempo. Okay, with me so far? We're getting to the 420 bit, I promise. If 5 16th notes in the old tempo equal a quarter note in the new tempo, then a quarter note from the old tempo will equal four-fifths of a quarter note in the new tempo. That last note that we had in the original riff was a quarter note. So that means that in the new tempo, it equals like four-fifths of a quarter note. Kind of strange. Just want to clarify what you're seeing on the screen. 3.2 sixteenth notes is four-fifths of four sixteenth notes, which is a quarter note. So 3.2 is four-fifths of a quarter note. It looks strange. Just go with me on this one. So now we have four evenly spaced pulses in the new tempo, so it's kind of like a measure of 4-4, four, four, but then with four-fifths of a note left over. How do we deal with that? Well, quarter notes can be divided into five quintuplets. And since there are four quarter notes per whole note, it stands to reason that there would be 20 quintuplets per whole note. Twentieth notes, if you're feeling saucy, but nobody would actually call them that. In this instance, we have four leftover quintuplets. Twenty of them would fit a whole note, but we only have four of them. We have four twentieth notes. Four twenty. <laughs> Okay, remember when I said there are 24 16th notes in a measure of 6-4? Well, check this out. Once we metrically modulated, there are 24 quintuplets. So the total number of subdivisions actually hasn't changed. All that changed is that when we modulated from the old tempo to the new tempo, the 16th note became the quintuplet. 
so we end up with 24 quintuplets. In order to describe time signatures with 24 quintuplets, we're using a measure of 4-4 and then a measure of 420. 420 is an example of an irrational or non-dyadic time signature. It's not really irrational in the mathematical sense. Irrational in a musical sense refers to time signatures which are built on subdivisions which are not powers of two. In this case, it's built on a subdivision of a quintuplet or a 20th note. <laughs> go and watch my whole video on irrational time signatures, but suffice to say they are fairly rare in their application. It just so happened that this particular instance of metric modulation required a 420 time signature in order to adequately describe what was happening. <laughs> the whole thing is actually complicated a little bit further based on what the bass player Mark Mnugian was doing within that measure of 420. He was playing triplets that were nested within those four quintuplets that lead then to the downbeat of the whole pattern. It's, it's kind of crazy, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so trying to notate that looks absolutely insane, which brings up a couple questions if you're going to zoom out from all of this. So, let's zoom out. So, it's pretty clear the band was not starting from this level of rhythmic wonkery, right? Instead, they started with a metric modulation, and then they tried to fit the baseline of the old tempo into the new tempo, giving them that runt quarter note at the end. Like, how did you come up with that? It just like, dude, that's in his soul. <laughs> That's Mark Mnuchin. Honestly, I don't even know, man. I just kind of like heard it, and I was just like, let's just give it a shot. I, I, at this point, I really like this band, because in rehearsals, like, everyone just like shouts out an idea that they hear, and we give it a shot. If it works, it works. If not, you just scrap that idea. And we did it, and it was like, oh, that kind of yeah. kind of cool. So it wasn't until a couple days into the tour where we realized that that runt quarter note could, in theory, be considered the meme time signature of 420. Uh, you know, like, you do the metric modulation, there's like four hits and the beginning of that, like, the solo section. And then there's that one left over, which is like four quintuplets. Four quintuplets, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, technically speaking, it's a measure of four, four, and then a measure of four, 20, because a quintuplet <laughs> is a 20th oh, yeah, so. note. <laughs> okay. Smoking that weed bound. Dude, the first time we tried it at the show, we just got stuck. Remember? <laughs> we just got stuck in the metric modulator because, like, everyone was so petrified of going back into the slip tempo. Like, I think everyone forgot, so we just, like, stayed there for, like, way too long. And so after that, we're like, guys, we're not doing that idea anymore. And then for this tour, we decided to bring it back. That's awesome, yeah. But they just do just the one time. And then while we were doing a Marks, like, what if we went on, like, a four chord? Made it like a churchy mode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's your uh, what's your symbol for church? What's your symbol for the four chord? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's I, I don't think anyone can do that because it requires both your hands. So you just it's have like, to, everyone guys, just go to church. church. Yeah. So basically, four twenty. This meme time signature is an emergent rhythmic property of metrically modulating this particular riff. In his video on the rhythms of Tigran Hamasian, David Bruce talks about the concept of rhythmic warping, where rough rhythmic relationships between cells are kept the same, but the subdivisions within each cell are warped to different numbers. That's related to what's happening in Shub's music. Is it it? We're like, dude, if we did a measure of 420 and included a nested tuplet, <laughs> what would it sound like? <laughs> But it was on the downbeat. That's where. That's where the. the <laughs> this, <laughs> yeah, guys. That's how we came up with it. We're watching Number File, and then we're like, "What if we applied this in a music context?" <laughs> I really enjoy this because it was music that was composed and performed without that kind of hyper formalized approach that a lot of times people think is necessary to perform complicated music. Instead, even though you need complex theory to explain it. The initial idea was just to perform music that the musicians thought was cool. Um, there are four of them. You have a measure of 420. Uh, yeah, ships are on. He feels. He feels the 420 from our hearts. 
Play right. sober though. Play sober, guys. Play sober. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 420 time signatures can exist despite what your high school music teacher told you. It's just that you need to have a fairly advanced understanding of syncopation and metric modulation and irrational time signatures to actually execute them. Marijuana.